Are you guys ready to go for an explore? Let's go. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open with the wind blowing in my hair. I'm driving down the highway, gonna do this my way. I can feel it in the air. Here I go. So we're heading out on an ATV adventure or side by side adventure, I guess. We're taking out Marianne's Razor and uh, we're gonna go bring you to a old abandoned iron mine that's not too far from here, kind of in our backyard. We're gonna de go down a uh, an old decommissioned rail bed, and uh, that'll take us basically right to the mine, and uh, we'll show you what's all there. So come see the backcountry in our backyard. Let's go. Okay. I've never been But you can walk through this world without a few punches upon your chin Gorge just send, uh, sending up the drone. Um, we are at our turn to head up towards the Josephine Mine. Uh, at the little intersection that we're at, it is uh, for the mine site. We're along the edge of Gates Lake. And he's going to take you and show you a little bit of the lake. And he's also going to show you um, the beautiful waterfall that flows into the lake. When we got married um, a few years back, we came out here, had our wedding pictures taken um, along the edge of the lake and at the base of the waterfall, which was pretty cool. But uh, this is the road that we're about to head up. And um, so it's it's pretty rough and, and spots going along the way, but nothing that the little razor can't handle. Um, you're going to notice as we go that the dirt is really red and the puddles are really red. Um, we've had a fair bit of rain, so hopefully there's going to be some good puddles uh, so that you can really see it. Because it was um, an iron ore mine, the land around it is really rich in iron. Therefore, the red dirt in the puddles. So hopefully we can get some good shots for you and uh, make our way up to the mine. We'll see you up there. I just realized I didn't bring any snacks. Who Are we going to survive without snacks? I don't know. I don't know. Fail. So we did a little stop here at the uh, intersection of the rail beds. So this is the main rail bed looking behind me here and in front of me to the uh, was the old Algoma steel rail bed from the Hawk Junction train yard down to through the steel plant, the Algoma steel plant uh, and uh, then down to the uh, harbor where they would load the ore on ships and ship it out of here back when I was a kid. This here, this is Gates Lake, which is named after the guy who developed the uh, 
the Josephine Mine, as well as two other mines around here, uh, Lucy and something else. But they're open pit mines that are just a couple miles the other direction. And uh, this, I believe, is one of the ponds. The old road came in, we crossed it a little ways back that went into the mine, and it goes down. It's pretty grown in now. And uh, it goes down to the mine over there, but the rail bed, the old rail bed is the way to go in. It's way easier. And uh, like I was saying, this pond, I believe when they, the Josephine Mine is on Parks Lake, which they actually pumped out the lake completely when, um, when they were mining. And uh, because they had water coming into the mine so much, they pumped out the lake. And uh, I believe the creek coming into the lake on the other end, they bypassed the flow of the lake when they pumped it out. It said they made a tunnel, was it? But I don't know what they did or where they ran it even. But um, I believe into this pond here, this lower area, you can see some old pipe there. So I don't know if maybe they just piped it in the flow. But uh, and then they stored it in here or they float bypass it here so it didn't go to the lake up there. So let's head up to the lake. Marianne's raring to go. She's like, let's go, let's go. Good things to see. It's only May 18th. We tried to get out before the leaves came on. You can see a lot more, but they pop out really fast. There was none a couple days ago, and they're just popping out like crazy now. And today's a warm day, so It'll be full leaves probably in another day or two. So you can see a little more now. It's the nicest time of year. You can see some old uh, steel pipe here. There's some more there. This is where the creek coming out of Parks Lake across the uh, rail bed. Looks like that's the old bridge. That's where the railway went over there. This little detour that I'm in here is uh, just where people came with their ATVs after it looks like. But there's what's left of the old 1940s rail bridge. You can see the remnants of a wooden culvert. These old culverts, they had uh, wood that was creosoted and then wrapped in a metal banding. You can see the wire banding that was wrapped around that cover. And uh, this, I think this is where the train tracks cross, but this isn't an original piece of the train bridge actually now that I come and look at it. This is uh, looks like an old power pole that somebody put down and then put some spikes in to uh, probably cross the river with ATVs. Maybe they pulled the old train bridge right out of here when they pulled the tracks out, I would imagine, so people didn't come in here. But, uh, that's it. And there's some, uh, timbers in the water over there, too. lake that we're gonna go around. Parks Lake. And back just on the other side of that island there. You can just sort of see the head frame. That's where we're headed. So this is the uh, red dirt I was talking about. I don't know if the red shows up the same uh, on camera, but she's really red. It's pretty hard to get off when it gets all over your uh, ATV. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this video, 
please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It's free and greatly supports the channel. And also consider checking out our Patreon page. The link is right here, as well as in the description. And there, you can get some real-time updates, behind-the-scenes content, and more. Hope to see you there. I've been acting like a wild man Sleeping like a child So luminous and vibrant Stranded, a castaway, and I'm not sure of those stranger in this country. I'm always in bloom for you, always in bloom, always in bloom for you. So we're up at the uh, upper level, I guess you'd call it, of the Josephine mine site. So the mine uh, is built along the edge of Parks Lake. And uh, when I was a kid, this area behind you guys... Oh, I thought it was a bird, it's just the old metal on the roof. <laughs> it's, it's a little windy up here. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, when I was a kid, we could ride up here on our dirt bikes and there was all the buildings. Well, I don't know if it was all the buildings, but there was a lot of buildings here. There was offices and bunkhouses and... All kinds of things scattered around here garages that was all taken away I think in the 80s sometime somebody came in was contracted by the government to clean it all up but for some reason they left these main buildings here the big this is some sort of a big chute that goes down below we'll be able to go see down below I think the train tracks came in below this area so they dumped into train cars possibly and um, then there's a what they call a test mill from what I could see down there. It's like a big ball mill and uh, there's assay lab in there. But those buildings, you, when I was a kid, you could actually walk in this whole chain of buildings along the hill. Now they're all caved in, but uh, you can still see the remnants of a lot of it. And um, they started exploring this around 1890, early 1890, and they did some exploration. There was a land dispute for a while. And then they did exploration over the years, and it wasn't really until 1940 when uh, Algoma Steel Corporation, who had the big steel plant in uh, right in Wawa, which was a huge operation for years, that's really what started Wawa and employed everyone. Um, but uh, when they took it over, or they started funding it, I guess, I don't know the details, but anyway, this mine and Ruth Mine and Lucy Mine, which are a little bit south of here, they started operating basically all of them and it seemed like this one had higher grade ore and they mined it first while they were setting up one of the bigger open pit mines and I kind of think I don't know but maybe that the um, it was way cheaper to mine the open pits and so they didn't mine this one very long I think it was you know into the mid 40s maybe four or five years is all they mined it and it looks like they went down around a thousand feet they sunk down a shaft, went down about a thousand feet. They uh, had lots of water coming in. So they ended up pumping out all of Parks Lake, which is a decent sized lake. I don't know how deep it is, but I guess they had pumps, uh, 6,000 gallon per minute pumps running for months to pump it out. And then they mined here for a short time and then abandoned it all. So we'll check out uh, all these old buildings and see what we can find. It looks like this is the area up above where they would dump ore in. So I'm not exactly sure where the shaft was around here, but I, it's, it's, clo it's somewhere close to this area, according to old maps that I found. And I don't know if it may be this area down here. I'm kind of suspecting because that's all been bulldozed over. So 
I assume maybe they capped it and um, I don't remember there would have been a head frame here before but really when I was a teenager I was more interested in dirt biking than mines so uh, but I pretty sure there was probably a head frame here at that time and that's where the shaft went down then they probably hauled ore up and dumped it in through here it must have transferred through over to the mill somehow and there's shoots below we'll show you i'll get my drone up over top of this thing so we can look down in it you can't really climb on up in it on it anymore it's too treacherous look. So this is a map from 1940-ish, 43 I think actually, that kind of shows the sites and where they did some drill holes and they did drill holes on all these islands. You can see the the number of the, of the drill holes on the islands, there, there, and some over here. And then it shows the roads. We came up here and we're up about here, that's the edge of the lake and this is where all the buildings were when I was younger. And then. I think this is before all of these buildings were put in along the hill. This sketch is prior to that. Concrete buildings, one on each side. And it looked like a road went through the middle. Can I go check them out? Sure. Yeah, so these look like matching concrete buildings, which are poured concrete with lots of rebar. Like they seem heavy duty. Like I always thought they were like maybe explosives uh, storage like a blasting shack it looks like they were cladded with wood and then had metal siding on them and they even have a poured concrete roof yet i don't see anything on the 1943 map but these could be after 1943 but they have electrical in them there's the light and there's a switch out here so yeah you know maybe my explosive storage guess is good because it showed laundry over here but that could be a wooden building that's long gone this road continues on for a ways there's some old remnants not much though and uh, like an old pump house down there and stuff this building's in way worse shape than the other one but look like they were matching buildings and one on each side of the road definitely a disclaimer if you're uh if you do end up out exploring this mine or any other mine, just be aware that um, somebody could own the property. I don't know who even owns this and there's no signs. If anybody does own it, I'm sure somebody must, I don't know, or it's taken back by the government. There's never been any signs. Ever. No, there's never been signs that I remember. And um, also it's dangerous, right? These are old falling down buildings. Like I've walked in these buildings before. Uh, be well before they fell down so you know I wouldn't go in any of them right now or really go that near any of them yeah where we were on top where I think they dumped ore down into the car and then you can see the building kind of continued on so I don't know if they had belts that ran things that way or what but this goes on for quite a ways this building and this used to be like I remember it being a huge structure all the way along here. Last time we were here it was in September, just as things were starting to fall. Like the leaves were starting to fall and 
man, it was like still really full. You could barely see any of this. It's nice and wide open now. So we're going to, um, we're gonna wander our way up there and have a look and see, see what kind of state these buildings are in. And if um, for any reason at all, we feel that it's just not safe to go in at all, we will try and send the drone in to try and get some shots in there. But otherwise we're just gonna be having a look at them from the outside. Oh, we're gonna send the drone in. We're sending the drone in. <laughs> He's gotta send it's, the drone yeah, in. It's so. not easy to climb up onto the main floor of that no. building. It's so rotten and old. No. But uh, we'll be able to send the drone in and we'll see the ball mill. You can actually see the steel balls and the old concrete stuff in there and all that. So I think this is a pump house. But uh, yeah, we'll wander around and see what we find. And we're just below the big mill building. We got big anchors down here that anchored some kind of a structure, I guess. And this building is just completely collapsed. You got to be careful. We don't know if we could be walking on a building. So when I was suspecting that um, from that where the head frame was, when I was suspecting that there must have been a conveyor that came this way that brought ore to the mill, I might assume that these um, these concrete footings with bolts sticking out of the top, you can see a line of them leaving the mill, heading back along the hillside to those other buildings. Possibly, yeah, possibly was there uh, footings for uh, maybe a, some sort of a conveyor or something maybe because I was they had to move it back and forth somehow these must be the older buildings from the 40s I'm gonna guess that are on the map that I have where they show test mill and stuff I'm gonna guess because these ones are long gone it goes way down there yeah it goes down towards the other buildings that are built along the side of the hill yet this mill which I think is not the test mill. I'm going to say this was oh, built after. Another. Yeah, this goes on for a bit. There's a l assay lab over there. And uh, I'm going to guess this mill was built after. You know, maybe this was built in the 40s and these ones were built when they were doing exploration, you know, starting early 1900. Would be my guess. So we're looking at the bottom of the uh, mill here. You can see the metal chutes. So you can see the little pile there. So obviously they milled on the next floor up with the ball mill and then their tailings got dumped down and uh, transported out to their tailings pile. There's a couple of the balls there. So we're down below those chutes now at the base of the building. You can see uh, two chutes there and then two more chutes over there. So this, I assume, was an assay lab, is my guess. It's, the building's kind of starting to lean. I've been in there before. You could walk down the stairs, not all the way to the next level though. The stairs kind of gave out at the bottom, but the top part of the stairs used to be solid. But um, you can see the timbers that this building's sitting on. There's not much left of them. So uh, I don't think I'll be going out there anymore, but I've been in that room before. There's a big metal, uh, if I can get a little bit closer. There's a big metal locker there. The walls are all, and the ceiling, is all metal lined. So that's why I assume it was assay. It looks like the whole room is fireproof. So, you know, maybe they had furnaces in there to do their lab stuff. But uh, hey, I'm no mine guy. I don't know at all. So uh, I'm just speculating. Maybe if anybody knows more, they can comment. But uh, yeah, you can go down to that level and after that it's not so great as far as going down the stairs. But I'm not going in this building anymore. It's really starting to lean. Is, uh, look at what's holding it up over here. Not much. Ready to fall down the hill? Uh, it's not gonna be graceful. 
Oh no. Looking through the bush, it's uh, it's awesome. It's such a great way to spend the day, but the absolute worst part of walking through the bush is when you walk into a freaking spider web. You can't see it. I don't even know how do they even get from one tree to the other. I don't know. But the worst part is you get through it and then you're like convinced that there's a spider on you somewhere. It's the worst. Anyway. Sure is pretty. I lost Mr. Jones. He saw a squirrel, I think, and went and chased it. Still up on the hill above the uh, mill. There's some kind of an old building here. It's got some piping going to it. And there's lots of piping in the wall. I don't know what this was. Super heavy duty metal uh, support for something. I don't know if maybe they pumped water from here or what they did. Lots of piping. So this collapsed building that had all the ore in it. Looks like it either fell into the water or it continued into the water. I don't know. Yeah, that's the uh, chimney from the this steam uh, generator. Or, I don't know, some sort of a steam engine. Wow. So, like, that long chimney would have attached oh, so right that's there. Good at some point? Yeah, that chimney would have been on there, going way up. Wow. There's the firebox. I just swallowed a bug. I hate bugs. I found a bottle! Well, it's like a, a jar. Eleven seventy six and eleven A fifty one. If anybody knows what those means. Those means? Those means? <laughs> um I don't know if maybe fifty one's the year, eleventh month of fifty one. I doubt it's seventy six. I don't think anything went on here around seventy six. But if that's valuable, somebody let me know. I'm going to put it right here. You can come and get it. Which right there. Don't forget. Farther down the lake here. I'm going to say this is back the early 1900 uh, exploration site. We got some remnants of a old building there. Some kind of a, a tank. Looks like there's maybe water access down there. Some pieces of metal here and there. And uh, and then there's this uh, old stove, maybe just a wood stove, I don't know. Would have been on the outside of the building, I think, because the building is over there. So this is kind of up on a little bit of a higher area, and it doesn't look like there was a building built around it. It looks like there was concrete poured around it, though. Definitely a wood stove. Got me, man. Oh, look, a stone fireplace on the other side. Cool. So this is the uh, stone fireplace that uh, we could see from the other side when we walked up. Kind of weird though. It uh, is on the edge of the water here and it faces the water. But the lake was pumped out, but it goes down eh, right in front of it, so looks like it was set up for cooking. There's a grating in it, so must have just been for outside cooking, I'm guessing. This is the place we stopped at first at the top, and I flew the drone down here, so they got a big water pipe that went up there, and then uh, the building continues along the side hill towards the mill. But I think this was some kind of a chute where we were up top and then you can see the walkways that went through there to connect all through the buildings, but that's all fallen down now. But uh, you can see in here there's a mechanism. I don't really like going in there, but it's a pretty solid steel structure, concrete there. And uh, all steel framed in and then there's a big chute it looks like. So uh, I don't know if train cars went through here, if there was tracks that uh, 
train cars actually came through because I believe the rail line came into here. So, as far as I guess, anyway. So our exploration is complete. Yeah. We uh, we did a pretty good job. We explored all the buildings, I think. Well, most of them. Um, there's not much left really of standing buildings and some of them you see a bit of rubble on the ground here and there. So uh, really there's not much to explore in some of them, but some of them there's lots. And uh, so we did pretty good. And we even walked way down to the end of the lake because I'd never been down there. So I explored some place I'd never been before and uh, saw the old dam there and the old water pipe coming up so mm -hmm. yeah we found um good. looks like i don't know if it was old like uh, homesteads or if it was camps or or whatnot but clearly a brick house of some sort that had fallen down yeah chimney and... yeah yeah i never realized before that there was exploration here in the early 1900s and then nothing much happened until like the 1940s mm -hmm. and so i think there's stuff from the original one and then the buildings that are more noticeable Current or still and, yeah. still somewhat standing standing are the newer ones from the 40s and the stuff from the early 1900s is yeah. just rubble really i think that's probably what we found up at the yeah end i think of the lake there was like yeah, the i think originally they started stuff. exploring at the end of the lake and then they kind of came this way after they did their big uh, sampling where they drilled all over and drilled out on the islands mm -hmm. and stuff so yeah that was pretty cool there's a ton of mine history in the area here when i was a kid there was like i don't know probably 30 40 mines that were still standing and you could explore and stuff but the government did a big push on making everything safe mm -hmm. and took everything away so we kind of lost all that history which is kind of sad there's still a couple open pits though there's the two mines that they ran in conjunction with this one which Maybe we'll take you there sometime in the future and show you those. They're pretty cool They're too. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot of history really to be found online as for this old Josephine mine. Um, I'm not really sure why, but it was really hard to find anything on it. So, if you were from the area, uh, or if you were in the area and you worked at this mine, or if a parent or a grandparent worked at this mine and you know some information, we'd love it if you'd share it with us. Please um, leave us a comment down below on anything that you happen to know about this mine. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. All right. So until next time. Oh. Oh. Say bye to the black, black flies. Oh. Can you see them? Marion doesn't like them. I had such a meltdown. I really <laughs> did. It's.
Is they don't, anyway. I don't know, they don't bother me, but they like her, so that, she just absorbs them all for me, I guess, and mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with them, so. You're welcome. You can see them flying around, though. Yeah. yeah. That's because I'm sitting beside you. Okay. Anyway. Bye, bye, black flies. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. Bye for now. I just swallowed a bug. I can be standing five feet away from Gord, and I will be in a swarm of them, and he won't have a single one around him. I guess they just smell really good, but see them. you can probably see them. They're just everywhere. They're like... Hey, bucks. <laughs>